Hello everyone and welcome to this Golf Monthly video where I'm going to be talking about 11 things that all golfers forget to do out on course. Now I'm not talking about forgetting your five iron or leaving your trolley battery at home. I'm talking about tactical things that you might forget midway through a round of golf. Think of this video as your checklist before every round to remind yourself how to score better and how to get the best out of your game. I'm at the very blustery West Hill today. Let's get started. Do you warm up properly before each round of golf? I think this is a massive thing that loads of golfers forget to do before their round of golf, and then their actual game will suffer for it. Now, I know not everyone will have a nice range to warm up like this, but even if it's 10 minutes of putting and chipping or a proper stretch on the first tee, any kind of warm up will really help your game. So don't forget that prior to getting to the course and play better golf for it. So another thing golfers forget to do when they're out on course in the middle of a round is use a little bit less loft when they're chipping. I've got a great example in front of me here on the 17th at West Hill, where I can't really putt it, although I'm close to the green, there's too much water on the ground, but there's also nothing for me to go over, so why would I need to take my lob wedge or my sand wedge, a much higher tariff shot in this situation? You'll see now if I try and take my 60 degree, I'm more likely to shank it or thin it because it's a high tariff shot. What I think a lot of golfers need to do is use a little bit less loft, Take your time around these chips. I've got an eight iron here and hit a, a lower tariff shot. Almost just put a putting stroke on this. <laughs> and get the ball rolling. Not my greatest effort. I need to practice it a little bit more, but I think taking less loft around the green is a much better idea. Okay, another thing I think golfers forget all too frequently when they're out on the course is to swing a little bit slower into wind. The tendency is to think, oh, I'm into wind, I've got to hit the ball harder, which it often isn't the case. You're not going to hit the ball that far anyway, so a gentle swing and a better strike will actually work more often. Great example here today, the second at West Hill, we're into wind, I've got the big dog out. I'd normally want to hit this as hard as I can to get down there, but into wind today, I'm going to swing a little bit slower, just try and get a bit of strike on it, get myself down the fairway. So I'm going to swing this as easy as I can. And away it goes, not my finest hit, a bit cutty, but into wind on a day like today, not too disappointed with that. So remember, into wind, swing a little bit slower. Right, so another thing I think golfers forget all too much when they're out on the golf course is not going every single pin. There are loads of sucker pins out there, and if you find yourself short side of these, you're gonna really struggle to make up and down. Start going for the center of the green more often, and there'll be other pins you can go at later in the round. I've got a good example here at the first at West Hill where the pin is in the middle, but it's really far to the left. So the last thing I want to do is aim at it, go left of it and find myself in that, in that trap or left of that trap where I'm never going to make up and down. So on this hole, I'm going to almost take my medicine, aim at the center of the green, hopefully get my two putt, walk on to the next one. Let's see how I do. Make sure I am nice and central. I tend to hit a bit of a fade. So this, this is a good pin for me. But I'm going to stay nice and central. And I did hit the little fade, and I got away with one. It wasn't my greatest strike, a little bit thin. But because I am middle, knowing my shot shape, I knew I couldn't go too far wrong. So don't get suckered into those pins. Play for the centre of the green, two putt, and attack those pins later in the round. Ah, right. That brings me on to my next thing that golfers forget when they're out on the course and it's to take every shot as seriously as the last. Now, I got a little bit angry with myself there, leaving that fairly easy putt short, and I've not thought about the next putt, and I've missed it. I've cost myself another shot. Now, it's easy to do this when the red mist descends. I've done it loads of times myself. I'm sure you have at home, but it's really important that throughout the round, you remind yourself not to get too angry, that every single shot matters. We'll do this on the fairway every now and again as well. If you duff one straight in front of you, You'll just take the same club, hit the same shot with the same amount of anger and the same thing might happen. So after a bad shot, take your time, remind yourself that every shot matters and hopefully that will save a few shots on the course. Right, so another mistake I think lots of golfers make is taking their driver off the tee when they don't need to. Now, across this video, you might think I'm a bit overly defensive on the golf course. Feel free to let me know in the comments if I am and if I'm horribly wrong on this. But I think on a hole like this, we've got the 12th here at West Hill, 273 it's playing today, a little bit downwind. I probably could hit the green with my driver if I really liked it. But there's all sorts in the way. There's bunkers, there's trees. 
it's times like this that I think a lot of golfers need to bin the driver, like I am there, and play something like this. A hybrid, a driving iron, a long iron, anything just to pop yourself in play, leave yourself a nice number in. So I'm gonna leave that driver to one side there. I've got my trusty four hybrid here, and it should just be the easiest swing to put myself in position. A bit like that on the first take as well, might I add. So I think a lot of golfers need to think a lot more carefully on the course about when they're using their driver, use it in the right situations, and on shorter par fours, play for position. Okay, so you join me here on the 12th, and after I was just telling you about playing for position, not taking your driver too often, I found myself out of position on a very short par four, so I'm not best pleased. And that brings on to the next thing loads of golfers forget when they're out on course, and that is to stay calm. I think if you can check yourself when you're out on course, you'll save at least, I think, two shots around especially if you're a bit of an angrier golfer. You know, you won't hit the angry chip or the angry putt when your head's not in the right space. Now, I know there's nothing worse than someone else telling you to stay calm. That often actually has the adverse effect. But I think if you can check yourself out on course, remind yourself to stay calm, it's a really important thing to remember throughout the entire round. While I'm here, another thing I think golfers forget is that bogey is your friend. And it is more often than not. It's not a card killer. And while it's not a great score, it's not going to ruin your entire round. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm hoping to make a par from here. I'm not going to say I'm not, you know, I do want to try and make up and down. But I'm going to remind myself that if I don't come off here with a par, a bogey is, is OK. And I'm not going to get too angry. And the bogey is my friend. It's not a double. It's not something worse. So stay calm. Bogey is my friend. And whatever I hit here, I'm not going to get too wound up about it. And I hit a good shot. So I've got to look at par. If I get a bogey, it's OK. So two things. Stay calm. Bogey is your friend. Okay, so another mistake I think a lot of golfers make is not playing for position on par fives. Now, I know we've already spoken about not taking driver all the time. I don't want to come over as overly defensive on the golf course, but I think every now and again, we need to look at a par five for what it is, take a bit less club and score a little bit better for it, I think, in the majority. Uh, example here, 17th at West Hill. I've hit my Sunday best drive here, pretty, pretty pleased with myself. But it's into wind. We've got trouble left, there's trouble right. Should I really be trying to hit a three wood to get to this green that's, that's barely in reach? Probably not. So, so take the situation into account on par fives, but I think a seven iron is the play here. So away with the three wood. I'm just gonna play, hopefully I'll have about 100 yards left in, something like that with just an easy seven iron. Not my best, but not my worst. Should just be a little wedge in from there. And I'm not going to make anything worse than a par there, whereas if my three went left or right, anything could have happened. So I think playing for position on par fives, when the situation warrants it, is really important. So one major thing I think loads of golfers forget to do is take a little bit more club when the conditions warrant it. So I'm talking about heavy wind like it is today, colder temperatures, and even consider when you're not striking the ball that well. I don't think enough of us adapt to that mid-round. So really think, you know, on the ninth hole, halfway through your round, What's the wind like today? How am I striking it? Should I attack the back nine with a little bit more club? Now I'm criminal for this as well. I'm gonna flash up some data from one of my recent rounds, my Arcos data, which shows I missed 10 out of 18 greens on a recent round, not my, not my finest round. Uh, and they were all short, all 10 were short. And that's because it was a windy day. It was a little bit cold. And as you can see, I wasn't hitting the ball that well. What I didn't do was take into account the temperature, the way I was striking the ball that day, which wasn't very good. And the fact it was really, really windy. So I was ending up short a lot of the time, missing all my greens and regulation, and my scoring suffered for it. So when you're out on course, think about all those conditions, reevaluate midway through a round, and don't forget to take more club. Right, the final thing that golfers forget to do when they're out on course, and you've probably heard it before, and you're gonna hear it again from me, is to take your medicine. Playing partners would have said it, coaches would have said it to you. You've probably told this yourself when you've hit a bad shot, but it's something we forget every now and again as we're trying to chase that score out on course. I've got a great example of it here at the second at West Hill. That gap in that tree was quite appealing to me and I think I might suddenly turn to Tiger Woods for this shot, but I've got to carry it over the heather. I've got to go below this tree through that gap. It's a very high tariff shot and for not that much gain, a chip out would make a lot more sense. So I'm going to show you what goes wrong when you don't take your medicine, when you try and take one on. Class, bonks it into the tree. There it goes in the heather. What I should have done, and I'll show you with this ball, is come way out to the left, all that fairway over there, take your medicine. And I'm gonna go and try and make a par now. So, I'm gonna say it one more time. Take your medicine, help you score out. Don't think you're Tiger Woods.
So there you have it. Those are the 11 things that I think all golfers forget to do out on course. As I said at the top of this video, consider this your checklist to remind yourself before every round of golf. And I'm thinking you'll save at least a couple of shots per round if you follow those rules. Are there any I've forgotten? Are there any mistakes that you commonly make out on course that you know you do but you forget halfway through a round? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. But for now, thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next time.